Okay, I promise I'm not gonna call it the Windows MacBook Pro. Okay, I promise, probably. So this is in fact the Microsoft Surface Laptop Studio 2 and it is lovely, it's clever, it's a two-in-one, it looks great, the performance is solid and I want to really like it. But it has a few problems, it's also very expensive and the battery life isn't all it could be. Question is though, should you get one of those or one of these things? And if you do enjoy this review, a cheeky little like and subscribe would be lovely. So like the original, the Laptop Studio 2 is a two-in-one convertible, only cleverer this time. The extra hinge behind the 14.4 inch touchscreen lets you tilt to three magnetically held positions. So you can use it like a regular laptop or in tablet mode or studio mode where it sits angled in front of the keyboard and becomes a kind of digital easel. And it's a really nice way of interacting with a screen, whether you're working, you're drawing, doodling, watching movies. And it kind of reminds me of the much bigger and also much pricier Studio 2 Plus, or even an iPad Pro with a magic keyboard. And if you go for the optional Surface Slim Pen 2 as well, which is charged and held by some very strong magnets here under the front edge, the whole thing just encourages you to be creative. And Microsoft reckon this is perfect for you creative professionals, digital artists, and I assume because it's one to me, talentless scribblers as well, but it's also pretty good for gaming. And I can do that. So while the Laptop Studio 2 is mostly like a hardware refresh, a spec bump, it's a pretty worthwhile one. And whichever model you go for, you'll get a 13th gen uh, Intel i7-13700H, uh, which is a pretty solid chip, uh, as well as the integrated XZ iOS graphics, which are fine. But what is exciting is you can spec it up to a RTX 4060 graphics card. That's an 80 watt TGP card with up to 64 gigs of RAM and a terabyte of storage. You also have the option of a slightly cheaper RTX 4050, or you can go with an RTX 2000 Ada Workstation GPU, although you'd really only want that for big CAD assemblies or large-scale data or simulation stuff. The base model now gets 512 gigs of storage and the Intel Iris Xe onboard graphics, and all models get a brighter 120Hz pixel sense touchscreen with HDR400 and Dolby Vision. There's also a new 1080p studio webcam with a new MPU which gives you some fancy live AI effects. We have Windows Hello 2.0 and plenty of connectivity including Wi-Fi 6E and a couple of Thunderbolt 4 ports. But then there's the price. The base model with that 512 storage, uh, 16 gigs of RAM and the onboard Iris Xe graphics with an Intel i7 is like two grand which is a lot of money. It's MacBook Pro 14 with M3 kind of money, which performs differently, mostly better, uh, and also has much better battery life. Two grand for a laptop that doesn't have a dedicated GPU is a lot of money. An extra 400 pounds gets you the RTX 4050, an extra 1200 pounds gets you a 4060. Top spec, we're looking at around three and a half grand, which is high-end MacBook Pro money. Although to be fair, they do go a lot more expensive, but also they offer more uh, customization. And perhaps their OLED screen option would have really helped put some distance between this and the MacBook Pros, especially as this is aimed at artists and designers who would definitely appreciate OLED's better color accuracy and HDR. Personally, I think the 4050 models offer better value, but if you're spending the best part of three grand, then perhaps another 500 quid or so for the spec you do want is the way to go, especially if you're you know, buying on the business and you get your tax back and all that. And then you've got the Slim Pen 2, which is an extra 120 quid. It is very nice to use, but there are plenty of third-party MPP 2.0 standard alternatives that should work nearly as well. But putting the price aside for the moment at least, there is a lot to like here. I mean, just look at this thing. Okay, it's not exactly slim because of the power on offer, but this kind of step design helps hide the depth. Although at 1.9 kilograms, or just under two kilograms with the GPU, it's pretty weighty and pretty dense for a 14 incher. But still, we're getting fantastic build quality, everything feels solid, the aluminium finish looks great, and as vulnerable as that hinge looks, it's surprisingly robust. It's also held in place by some strong magnets, so it doesn't flip out accidentally or move if you're trying to draw on it in studio mode. I like using it like this or in regular laptop mode, but as a tablet, it's just far too heavy. On the left side, we have Thunderbolt 4 ports, which do support DisplayPort and power delivery. And we also now get a USB 3.1 type A following some feedback from the old model. And on the other side, a micro SD card reader, audio jack, and the pretty much obsolete Surface Connect port for the DC charger. I mean, even Microsoft has given up with this port for the newest Surface dock, which is Thunderbolt 4 instead. And if this really is for creatives, then we should have a full-size SD card reader, not the bloody micro SD. Oh, and like the MacBook Pro competition, you can't upgrade the RAM or the SSD or anything really, which is a shame because that often is one of the advantages of going for a Windows laptop, is that you can sort of open it up and upgrade it over time. 
not with this. Now, being a Surface laptop, you get a great keyboard and a big haptic trackpad. Both are very comfortable to use. The keys are well-spaced and nice and accurate to type on. The touchpad also now has an adaptive mode, which disables multi-touch gestures and looks for more multiple points of contact and movement instead, which should make it easier for people with different physical input needs. It's kind of like an accessibility option. As for the display, well, it's fine. It's 1600p, it's sharp, viewing angles are great, and everything is lovely and smooth thanks to that dynamic 120 hertz, plus the touchscreen is accurate and responsive. However, I measured the HDR peak brightness at 425 nits on a 10% window, which tallies with the HDR 400 spec, but it is very average. Although I still enjoyed watching TVs and movies on this, especially with Dolby Vision. And so indoors, it's bright enough, although you'll definitely struggle to use it outdoors, and reflections from this glossy screen are ridiculous. As for color accuracy, in my tests, this hits 100% of the sRGB gamut, but only 87% and 80% of the P3 and the RGB gamuts. And it's just nothing special for a device where the screen is so key. As for performance, this is a pretty powerful convertible, especially in the higher end spec, which I've been testing. So I've got the 13th Gen i7, I've got 64 gigs of RAM and that 80 watt 4060 which is great for graphics and design work and 4K video and photo editing. However, to keep noise and heat down, the CPU throttles at only 70 degrees Celsius, meaning performance will fall behind other machines with the same CPU, but that have a higher temperature limit. As for benchmarks, well, I put this against the most recent M2 and M3 based MacBooks and MacBook Pros, and it really hits home the advantages Apple have made in the last couple of years. In most cases, this was slower than an M2 Pro and way behind the M2 Max, let alone the new M3s. But before you shout at me in the comments, I know it's not apples to apples, pun slightly intended, as this is a Windows machine. But bearing in mind the similar prices and the target audience, I think it's a fair comparison. Plus, there are plenty of much more powerful Windows workstations for similar money. Gaming performance is pretty great though. Frame rates were consistent with few frame drops and everything was lovely and smooth, especially with that 120 hertz screen, basically what you'd expect from a 4060. I got nearly 100 frames per second with ultra settings in Total War Pharaoh at native 1600p, which looks a lot sharper than 1080. Forza Motorsport looked great with medium settings and DLSS performance, and I averaged a healthy 80 FPS, although of course you could always drop to 1080p. And firing up Baldur's Gate 3 in Ultra, I averaged 69 FPS without DLSS, but then I maxed out the 120Hz refresh rate with DLSS performance. And while I'm on games, the Dolby Atmos tuned speakers on this thing are actually very impressive, especially as you can't actually see them. They're clear, there's a good amount of bass, and it means you don't feel like you need to reach for your headphones every time you watch something or play a game. But then we have Microsoft Copilot, and the idea here is to roll several AI tools and abilities into one natural speech tool within Windows 11, making the OS itself a bit more of a feature, although you can also get this through Edge or your browser. And it understands context, so if you ask it to change your window settings, like turning on dark mode, changing your wallpaper, asking you for help, or just asking you not to be disturbed for a while. Or if you use the snipping tool for a screen grab, it can highlight the text, letting you then copy and paste or even redact it before you save and share. And it gives you answers to questions or summaries based on web searches, and it uses the GPT-4 AI to answer in everyday speech. And it can save a heck of a lot of time, especially when you ask it to write a review. It's not bad, although still worth double checking. You can ask it to draft an email for a meal plan or to plan out your road trip and the best places to check out along the way. It's all very clever. You just have to remember to actually use it. I kind of forget it's there sometimes. And it is also still in preview, and as it rolls out, there will be new features added in. Although, of course, this isn't exclusive to Surface laptops, it's any Windows 11 device, although it is a staggered rollout, so different devices will get it at different times. However, as usual, with higher performance Windows laptops, the battery life isn't great. My unit, with its 4060, only managed five to six hours in my usual full screen video test, and around the same in my light use test. For photo and video work, it's going to be a lot less. To be fair, not everyone needs all day battery life on the laptop, especially if you're using it at the desk, at the office, and you've got you know, the power plugged in. But you know, 14 inch laptops are generally a bit more portable than bigger desktop replacements. And considering the price and of course the competition, it's a little bit disappointing, especially as a MacBook Pro 14 will likely last you twice as long. And then we've got the webcam at the top here. It's a 1080p 30 FPS webcam. I thought this might be a little bit better. It's blowing out the background there. But yeah, the quality's fine. You do have a couple of extra features like being able to bokeh out your uh, cameraman. Plus there's auto framing. Say hello to producer Pete here, by the way, who helped out with this one. And all this is down to the new MPU AI processing chip, which means all this can be processed on the fly, which is a first for an Intel based surface device. 
so despite some issues, I still genuinely do really like this studio laptop too. I think you're gonna have to really want that studio convertible sort of tablet experience and you're gonna have to want that higher performance as well. But if those things are important to you, you have some pretty deep pockets and you do definitely want a Windows 11 laptop, then yeah, you could do a lot worse. And I can definitely see a version three of this perhaps with an OLED screen, 14th gen Intel CPU and a longer battery life that would be a much easier recommendation. But given we don't see these Surface laptops refreshed that often, it could be a couple of years away. Otherwise, there are plenty of other portable two-in-one Windows laptops that are fast enough for graphic design work with better screens and longer battery life. And the performance and battery advantages of the M3 MacBook Pros is really hard to ignore given their similar-ish pricing. And I'm not sure I can get behind the base model. You're not gonna want to carry around that extra size and weight without the GPU it's designed for. And things like video editing and gaming is great with a 40 series GPU. But what do you reckon? Do you think you could be tempted to spend that kind of money on a Surface Studio laptop like this? Or would you rather go for a uh, fruit-based rival? Let me know what you make of the new Surface laptop in the comments below. If you've got any questions, drop a comment as well. I'll do my best to answer them. And if you did enjoy this review, which I hope you did because you watched the whole thing, then a like and subscribe would be fantastic. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you next time right here on The Tech Chat. Well, not exactly right here because I'm in a hotel room right now, but back in the studio next week.